Chapter 4.9.5 Wars Decentralize Control Over Vital Agrarian Resources Zero trust, permissionless, and non-systemically exploitable control over resources are not the only socio-technical benefits of warfare. Another major benefit of warfare that people overlook, one that is extremely relevant to a discussion about Bitcoin, is decentralization of abstract power and control authority over resources. In addition to making a population more secure against psychological exploitation and abuse, warfighting also gives people the ability to physically constrain other people's abstract power and control authority. The ability to physically constrain abstract power represents the ability to physically decentralize abstract power hierarchies and its corresponding control authority over resources. In the author's experience, performing research for this theory, this seems to be one of the most underappreciated social technical benefits of warfare. People don't seem to understand that one of the biggest advantages of warfighting is that it allows sapiens to decentralize abstract power and control authority over their valuable resources. Warfighting is the reason why there is no single centralized ruling class over all the world's resources. Despite several attempts, nobody in history has ever been able to establish a single ruling class precisely because of the physical constraints caused by warfighting. This concept can be very counterintuitive to people because many people, especially those people who don't actually study or participate in warfare, have accused warfare as being a power consolidation mechanism rather than a power decentralization mechanism. These people will claim that warfare only gives people the ability to centralize their control authority and use it to oppress people. The reasoning often goes something like this. Kings raise armies and then utilize those armies in military campaigns to capture more resources. Therefore, militaries are centralizing forces because rulers build and use them to grow and consolidate their abstract power and control authority over resources. There are three problems with this line of reasoning. First, it makes no distinction between physical power and abstract power. People who make this argument treat physical power and abstract power as if they're one and the same thing, when they are clearly not the same thing. Why do they make this false correlation between abstract power and real power? We have already discussed one reason why. The logical fallacy of hypostatization. People don't think about how they think about power. A second problem with this line of reasoning is that it relies on linear chain of events thinking rather than systems thinking. People who adopt this line of reasoning effectively blame the military for the king's consolidation of abstract power for no other reason than the fact that a military campaign happened to be the most recent, or easiest to observe, thing in a linear chain of events preceding the consolidation or expansion of the king's abstract power. In other words, they're tacitly implying a direct causal relationship between military campaign and consolidation of power simply because of a temporal relationship, while willingly ignoring other explanations that could equally explain why the king's power has been consolidated. It's not uncommon for wars to break out in addition to other factors like disease or famine or other disruptive factors which happen at the same time and could just as easily explain how a person could consolidate abstract power. Another perfectly valid explanation for why a king has more consolidated power following a military campaign is simply because more people choose to believe in the king's abstract power for reasons separate than but temporarily correlated to the military campaign. A third problem with this line of reasoning is that it willfully ignores the fact that physical power has never been strictly necessary to create, codify, or consolidate abstract power and control authority over resources. This reasoning essentially ignores the lessons which Admiral Columbus and so many others have demonstrated throughout history. All that is required to create, codify, and consolidate abstract power and control authority over people's resources is for people to adopt a common belief system. As countless ideological movements have demonstrated across thousands of years, militaries are unnecessary for the consolidation of abstract power. Clearly, warfighting is used to constrain and decentralize ideological movements that consolidate abstract power too much for people's liking, hence religious wars. There is nothing physically limiting a person or regime from convincing a population to adopt an ideological belief system. 
which expands worldwide, then consolidates and centralizes abstract power and control authority over everyone's resources. Except, of course, for one thing, real power. Herein lies a key insight into warfighting, which so many civilians tragically miss. Warfighting is one of the main activities preventing agrarian society from a single consolidated centralized belief system which could be systemically exploited by a single ruling class. There is no one world government because societies are willing to fight wars to prevent that other government from becoming their government. If you ever feel like you're being oppressed, then take a look around. There is a high probability that you either one have chosen to adopt an exploitable belief system, two, you're not strong enough or willing to physically fight to secure yourself against oppression, or three, some combination of both. We have established that God kings don't need physical power to oppress you. All they need is for you to, one, adopt ideologies which give them abusable imaginary power, and two, be too weak or docile to physically resist them. So if you feel like you're being oppressed, it's likely because you have adopted a belief system that is being exploited. Combined with the fact that you're too weak, scared, docile, or ineffectual to physically secure yourself the way all animals in nature do. It's an impolite but valid argument. With these concepts in mind, let's consider what prevents an oppressive god king from taking over the world and exploiting everyone at global scale. People's ideologies and desires for non-physical dispute resolution clearly motivate them to adopt exploitable belief systems. So what remains as the final line of defense for the global consolidation of abstract power are the fighters. There is a tiny subset of the global human population who remain unwilling to forfeit their physical power or who remain unsympathetic to abstract exploitable belief systems which are so very clearly flawed. These people are the only ones left in our global society who have the physical strength and aggression required to preserve our species' physical power-based dominance hierarchy. They spend the energy and risk the injury needed to settle disputes, preserve globally decentralized control over resources, and achieve consensus on the legitimate state of ownership and property the way so few of us are willing to do. This tiny subset of people less than 2% of the global human population, are warfighters who represent the last people standing in the way of one ruling class gaining consolidated and unpeachable abstract power over everyone. Warfare is the reason why control over our valuable resources remains decentralized. Removing this global scale physical power competition would remove the complex emergent benefit of decentralized control authority over our resources. In other words, warfare is one of the few things physically preventing abstract power and control authority over Earth's resources from being completely consolidated by one ruling class. So it is absolutely not valid to make the claim that warfare consolidates abstract power because it's actually one of the largest physical barriers preventing the consolidation of abstract power.